Wait, let me guess, you thought because recently we've been reviewing some flashy laptops on this channel, we'd forget about the everyday laptops? Nah, here at Solvetech, we're an equal opportunity laptop reviewer. God, that sounds so corporate. But seriously, today we've got the latest iteration of the HP Laptop 15, rocking Intel's recently rebranded Core 5 processor, 16 gigabytes of memory, though it is DDR4. We've also got a modest 512 gigabyte SSD. We also get Intel's integrated graphics, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3 standards on board. And finally, this is a 15 inch full HD display. Now, while this laptop has an extreme lame name. I mean, seriously, HP, just laptop 15. Weird. But nonetheless, the fact is this is one of the most popular budget laptops out there. It's got a relatively cheap or affordable entry point and can give you some pretty decent specifications. And we're going to see if this machine has what it takes to earn your hard earned cash. So let's get into it. You can expect some pretty standard packaging here. The HP Laptop 15 comes in a standard looking cardboard box. Open that up and get all the goodies out of there and you have a few things. Firstly, behind some protective packaging, you have the HP Laptop 15 itself. Charming, but we'll come back to that in just a minute. We also get this smaller than an atom 45 watt charging adapter. It honestly just looks adorable and cute. Though unfortunately, HP is still stuck in the past as we don't get Type-C charging even in 2024. You do get the standard wall out to charging cable piece and an envelope inside which you have some basic documentation. In terms of design, HP continues to use the same design language we've seen with the past several generations of the HP Laptop 15. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's still got a pretty symmetrical design with those rounded edges. That nice silver color goes nicely with the body tone over here. And the laptop actually has a pretty sturdy build despite being made entirely of plastic from top to bottom. Now you do have a overall weight of just around 3.6 pounds, which isn't too shabby for a 15 inch device. Like I mentioned at the top side, you have a plastic surface finish. The one good thing here is that this thing is almost entirely immune to fingerprint residue, which is one less pain point aesthetically speaking. And then at the center, you do have the HP logo with a reflective surface for some additional aesthetics. On the side of the laptop is where you'll find all the relevant ports. So on one side, you have a USB-A super speed port, a fairly outdated HDMI 1.4B port, and then a type C port, which surprisingly does have power delivery as well as display port 1.4. To functionality. On the other side, you will find the charging port and one more USB A super speed port. You do not get a media card reader, unfortunately. Bottom side of the laptop, pretty standard stuff. You've got a plastic finish here as well. You'll notice you have a reasonably large air intake vent. And then on either corner, you'll notice you have two speaker grills. So this is a bottom firing stereo speaker setup. And of course, we'll do a sound test in just a bit. Unfolding this laptop presents you with a generous amount of palm rest space, which is expected with that 15 inch form factor. That silver color looks quite nice, despite the fact again that we have a plastic inner chassis. Now the trackpad here was the real highlight for me. I mean, honestly, despite having a plastic surface finish, you've got a decent amount of surf real estate, but the real MVP feature here is the lack of flex. Seriously, I mean, there is a very limited amount of flex and the trackpad feels quite tactile as well. It's well calibrated, putting it around the league of a mid-range laptop more so than a budget one. So good job there, HP. But you know what's even more impressive than the trackpad? The keyboard. Firstly, I love the gray tone keycaps here. They provide a very subtle contrast and also the font is quite easy to read on top of the keycaps. Additionally, you'll be happy to know the keyboard is fully backlit and this is now part of their standard function. So no more non-backlit keyboards. You also have the inclusion of a full size 10 keypad thanks to the 15 inch form factor, though you do not get a built in fingerprint scanner, which again is expected. Now, what's really impressive is the typing experience. You have a decent amount of key travel and the keyboard feels quite tactile. You'll be surprised to know that HP uses this keyboard on their higher end pavilion and even some of their Spectre series laptops, making it again a very impressive keyboard all around. I don't really have any words to praise the hinge quality here because it is still the same single tier hinge mechanism HP has been using and in the past this hinge has proven to have certain 
long-term problems if you're not gentle with it. So just make sure that you open and close your laptop gently and not like how I'm showing in this video for test purposes, of course. Now, as far as display fitting goes, you do have a bit of a notable chin at the bottom and a full plastic encasing around for the bezels. You'll also notice that the side bezels are relatively thin and fairly immersive, all things considered. And at the top, you have, again, a fairly thin forehead. At the center of which you have a pretty nice and clean full HD webcam, depending on where you are in the world, you may still be unfortunately getting the lesser 720p version. My understanding is that you can actually get two configurations depending on where you are in the world regarding the display. So you have a lesser 720p configuration, which honestly should be illegal in 2024. And then you have the configuration we have here, which includes a full HD display, a 60 by 9 aspect ratio, a standard 60 hertz refresh rate, a peak brightness of 300 nits, which while not great, isn't bad either. You do have a matte screen here, which also means you get a natural anti-glare coating, which is always a good thing in this case. Now, as far as color rating go, you still have a approximate 56% sRGB rating, which means colors for the most part look quite dull. I wouldn't recommend this laptop for creative purposes, though it'll be fine for general viewing. A quick recap of the system specifications on board. So we've got Intel's Core 5 120 U series processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, which is slightly dated, but it's still a generous amount of memory for this machine. Intel's integrated graphics, depending on where you are, you may be able to upgrade to a more powerful Core 7 processor with DDR5 memory standards instead. Now, day-to-day -day activities like surfing the web or watching videos online is gonna be a breeze for this machine. It can even handle itself well with stuff like programming on Python, for example, or doing code compilation thanks to the additional amount of memory we have on board. Now, when you do more demanding activities like full HD video editing, you can actually do it to a limited scope. So if you have one or two layers, you'll find there's not a lot of frame drops and it's a pretty smooth experience. You can even get decent render times. However, if you attempt to do anything higher like 4K video editing, this machine does greatly struggle. You're gonna have frame drops even with single layer editing. And in all fairness, it's not really designed for that. Gaming performance is a little bit disappointing. Now look, I know this is not a gaming machine, but when compared to similar spec machines in a similar price point, I found that games like Fortnite barely hit 40 frames per second, even on the lowest of settings. When you compare this to the likes of Dell's Inspiron or IdeaPad 3, for example, they're actually able to sustain 60 FPS with pretty much the same specifications. So there's something definitely not right over here. There are subtle improvements as far as thermals go. For example, under unrealistic peak loads, the average surface temperature maxes at around 40 degrees Celsius, which is about three degrees less than previous generations. Under more realistic sustained loads, that number quickly drops around 38 degrees Celsius, which again is a modest improvement. Fan noise only gets about as loud as 53 decibels under peak loads, but the problem is that the fan does frequently go off while it doesn't hit peak RPMs, do anything more than web browsing, and you will hear an audible fan noise. As far as self-upgradability is concerned, you do have two DDR4 sodium slots, which can be maxed with up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. You can also upgrade the one preoccupied M.2 slot to a maximum memory or storage of one terabyte. You get a mere 41 watt hour battery here, which means realistically you can expect just around seven to seven and a half hours of realistic runtime. HP definitely cheaped out there. Speaker quality is not gonna be anything great. It is a budget laptop ultimately, but despite that, it's not bad either. Here's a quick sound test for reference. Yo stand up, we gonna make some moves tonight. Yo stand up, got something to prove tonight. So stand up. With an approximate 800 US dollar price point for the configuration we have here, the fact is that the HP Laptop 15 has been creeping up its price over the years to the point now that it's almost difficult to call this a budget machine and more so a lower end mid range machine. With that said though, HP has also done a pretty decent job at keeping up with modern day specifications. We've got Intel's latest processor. While the memory standards are outdated, you're getting 16 gigabytes, which honestly is the standard in 2024. And that usually equates to decent performance when you're doing most productivity-based activities. And you can even do some more advanced activities like programming and to a limited extent, video editing. 
Well, this is not a gaming laptop, but general gaming performance is a little bit worse than some equal competitors. And hopefully that's an area HP can work on through software updates and BIOS updates as well. Now, generally speaking, I think the HP Laptop 15 isn't a bad laptop. If it does go on sale, that is. At its current price, it's definitely stretching a little bit as far as how expensive it should be. But if you get this laptop about a hundred bucks off, I think it's a pretty sweet deal for the value it offers. And these laptops do frequently go on sale, especially around back to school season and Black Friday season as well. If you are interested in purchasing this laptop, I will leave links in the video description below for your reference. And as always guys, if you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button and consider subbing to our channel. Catch you in the next one.